she has worked as a mental health care new delhi she has worked as a consultant cancer care platform development prozila health care she has worked as a consultant center head training nursing nursing attendant health care at home tower welcome hina welcome to uh, this webinar Over thank you, you so much hina thank you so much thank you thank you everyone for taking out time and uh, thank you dr anu to oblige me and actually take me as a speaker to this uh, wonderful forum and uh, i'm sure we have a wonderful discussion today so uh, before we start so can i ask everyone to mute yourself i think uh, yeah, please uh, part- be- yeah yeah please participants request you to uh, mute yourself right and uh, if you have any questions so you can uh, you know uh, enter in chat box we will share question, we will have question answer session at the end of this webinar yeah right Please. yeah uh, so uh, the f- as uh, the elongated the, the experience is not as longer as you have explained it so nicely uh, dr anu and it's always been privilege to be associated with you and uh, always learned from you many things and so i am um, so as uh, dr anu has already said like i've been working into various capacities into oncology and uh, learning and development as well so presently if you ask me about present uh, present uh, assignment i would be i work with hcl healthcare and I take care of the clinical excellence department okay so i'm just going to share my screen and let me know once it is visible to all visible okay. yeah, it's visible you know yeah perfect so before we start i would actually uh, try and like you know i treat as when uh, that it, the session is more as an interactive session it's not a teaching session where am i going to teach you about cancer or anything but it's a forum where i think uh, we are trying to map the young ma- young minds uh where we are trying to evolve from where the original nursing is and where what all opportunities do we have available in the environment and uh that's what the discussion we would like to have and um, any anything any expectations before we start or anything from the participants i would like to hear from you before i start on my discussion it's more of give and take kind of a session so uh over to you anybody would like to actually say what do you uh what do you expect what is oncology nursing or anything anything whatever comes into your mind may i want to ask yes please ha huh. ma'am uh, in the recent day why the cancer cases are increasing more and more so what is the exact cause that i want to know okay so that's more of a um, more of the reasons as in medical reason as in why the epidemiology or like you know why the incidence of the cancer is increasing uh, but that would have a different kind of reason as in environmental reason as the type of food habits we have the exposure the car- the exposure to the carcinogenics is available in the market so there would be i think a, like you know huge lot of list because of that there's no standardization there is no enlisted uh, documented वर्ल्ड कैंसर डे एंड द इमर्जिंग रोल ऑफ ऑंकोलॉजी नर्सेस सो हैव यू एवर हर्ड अबाउट ऑंकोलॉजी नर्सिंग we have heard about critical care nursing dialysis nursing obs obs and gynae emergency nursing anybody have you ever thought about a speciality called oncology nursing yes or no anyone <coughs> okay i believe the most of the participants would be uh, the students or the staff who are already working into the hospital yes ma'am okay 
So now World Cancer Day, uh, the theme for 2022 to 2024 is closing the care gap, as uh, Dr. Anu has already uh, said. This World Cancer Day, we recognize the power of knowledge. So this is what is the thought process about this year, right? So we they say that they want to the organization looks that the the whole world looks cancer day as in to recognize the power of knowledge we know that every single one of us has the ability to make a difference large or small and that together we can make real progress in reducing the global impact of cancer so now when we are talking about our role we are not really like you know we can, so there are always few controllable and non controllable things right so if in case the, when we are talking about the increase in the cancer we don't really have much to say in it because at the provider end or at the healthcare end we are actually at the uh, at the premises where we are actually going to cure the cancer like we are at the uh, uh, role where i am going to talk about the treatment to cancer and my role to it so this is where they think that everybody has the ability to make a difference so when we talk about the nurses we are the role of nurses to close this gap is your role into cancer care okay so if you see here the first the cancer theme is always for 3 years so this is how they have divided it right so how 22 we are saying that we are going to put it as a realizing then is uniting in the next year will be will be uniting our voices to take actions and the third one will be together we challenge those in power what does it mean so start me in the beginning only like why are the reason what are the reasons that the cancer burden is increasing right but what do you think do you think that india has good data about it do we have any perfect figure saying this is the percentage of breast cancer this is the percentage of lung cancer do we have do we have this kind of data to actually start we always talk about evidence care we always talk about evidence nursing care or evidence around the care right? right yes or no yes ma'am yes, yes so ma so i want to ask is do you think kya hamare paas it's a data hai india mein do you think we have that data no ma'am no and why do you think we don't have that data ma'am hamare paas hmm and because lots of people if they are getting uh, cancer they people don't want to die want to go there hospital to detect their diseases uh, yeah. so so right basically yeah. there is a problem where uh, people there is no mechanism where the repository can be taken so data will only come if in case there is a place where everyone is going to register the problem right so you are right that people don't want to come out in the public and say that i have this problem because they there are lot many taboos attached to it like you know they they think that pata ke zyada ho jayega then they don't want their relatives to know about it so there are n number of reasons so when we talk about the cancer theme for 2022 it is saying realizing the problem first is we have to realize the problem the first year of closing the care gap is to understand and recognize the inequities in cancer care around this about having an open mind challenging the assumptions and looking at the hard facts so that means kisi bhi problem ko solve karne ke liye first i have to understand what is the band what is the gravity of the problem how bigger is the problem वॉट आर माई वेरियस कट्स कहाँ पे प्रॉब्लम ज्यादा है कहाँ पे कम है सो वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कैंसर थीम दिस ईयर वी आर गोइंग टू पुट एनर्जीज टू टू से रियलाइज द प्रॉब्लम वॉट इज द इन एक्विटी इन कैंसर केयर कॉस्ट लिप्स देर इफ यू आस्क मी वॉट इज द रीजन वाई कैंसर इज इंक्रीजिंग नंबर वन पीपल आर नॉट कमिंग आउट नंबर टू बिकॉज द कॉस्ट ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट इज सो वेरी हाई दे आर नॉट एबल टू कोप अप विद विद द ट्रीटमेंट so that is one thing they are going to talk about second is people who seek cancer care hit the barrier at every turn so what are the what are the challenges so pehle is like do you know it is cancer do you know which doctor to do you know is the doctor going to give me the right treatment is there a standardization in the treatment so there are so many barriers so first is cost second is the barrier 
then his third is income education location and discrimination between based on ethnicity gender sexual or orientation age disability and lifestyle are just a few of the factors that can negatively so now that means we are trying to realize what are the factors which is which is being negative towards the treatment cancer kyu bad raha hai because people are not getting the treatment done people do not know they have cancer if they know they don't have the money to get the treatment done if they have the money they don't know where to go which is the right place to go if they know which is the right place they don't they don't know ki wo sahi treatment bhi mil raha hai ki nahi mil raha theek hai so is year mein this year has been taken care where we are going to put all the problems together and find out the gaps which is affecting everyone okay we are talking about the patient and we are talking about the loved ones do you think when someone has cancer it is only about one patient or it is about the whole family tell me kisi ko cancer hota to is it because sirf patient is suffering or the whole family is suffering the the whole family is suffering ma'am right so the whole family is suffering because barriers are not set in stone so that means these barriers are not ki maine aaj 10 point bana diye and that's end of it no these can keep changing okay this is the year to question the status that and help the re- reduce the stigma do you think stigma is there what do you mean by stigma do you think people are even open in today's environment to openly say i have cancer people can easily say i have stones i have kidney stones i have pneumonia do you think people go out and say i have breast cancer i have lung cancer no, batate hain log no ma'am no ma'am Uh, because there is a bigger stigma attached to it because this it is still counted as a taboo that if i tell it to someone people are actually going people think that it is communicable so we are find this year has been put in to find out that how can i reduce the stigma to listen to the perspectives of the people living with cancer and their community so we are talking we are also going to put an effort ki patient ko bhi sunenge and relatives ko bhi sunenge so what are their challenges so that we can put everything together okay so once we have this problem realized then next year we'll talk about ki karna kya hai like you know then once i have all the problem then i'll have a plan ki bhai ab karna kya hai and then next will be the final process in the picture so this is what the theme of the cancer for 3 years look like so that means i'm closing the gap starting from the beginning to the end okay so next is why are we discussing this we are trying to say what is the importance of my nurses my oncology nurses if do you think that we have a speciality called as oncology nursing yes ma'am ma'am yes okay. ma'am how many of you any of the students if in case i can ask if you ask if i can ask uh, in your four years how much do you talk about cancer nursing in your complete curriculum how much studies is only pertaining to cancer third year third year but how many uh, how ma'am, six, uh, ma'am uh, more than A rough picture, rough. I maybe my figures. I did my graduation like probably seventeen years ago, so my figure will be totally different. But uh, presently, how many hours, how many educational hours, or I say how much practical hours you get in the oncology in the oncology area, oncology nursing as a specialization. So what I want to talk about is like you know what we can, what are we going to make a difference. we always say empower the nurses do we say it or not yes ma'am yes ma'am what do you mean by empowerment we always say as a leader I'm providing a authority to someone authority with authority do you think uh, authority comes in with experience or with knowledge or with both I'm or with just both. with both so empowerment when we talk about empowering the nurses i am going to talk more about are are we actually putting effort to upskill ourselves 
so empowerment comes with upskilling so that is where the stress is that like you know for if we are talking only pertaining to oncology nursing this is how my junior nurses should be thinking that i need to upskill myself to reach a stage where i feel empowered not because you are only 10 years of nursing into nursing that you are at a staff nurse one level two level three level that you just keep on increasing uh, with the years it the empowerment comes with upskilling how many of us do we put an effort to upskill ourselves so that's a question to you how many how many of us do you do we think about uh, studying forward uh, once our graduation is done yes ma'am business is yes ma'am so it is very much important that we need to upskill at every stage no matter what i am 15 years down the line i am 20 years down the line you should always keep upskilling so if you always look for someone where you would like to reach like you know so you always see that the person can never grow can never be empowered until and unless i am upskilled and upskilling comes only with your own motivation okay so if i talk about uh, some facts so india, so india is in the need of 4.3 million more nurses by 2024 this is a fact given by mr dilip who is the who is heading our nursing unions and uh, if we go by who data what is the strategy is proposed to it so if you think if you talk only about india we are going to need sirf india india may by next 2 years we would need existing say 4.3 million more okay so you can un- just imagine ki what is the importance of your profession you are so much in demand right so but do you think this demand can be fulfilled so what who has proposed that uh there are few strategies how can i do go is i have just highlighted few first one is growth in the number of nurses in the workspace so that means i need to increase increase my nursing for workforce second is increase in the participation of trained personnel in workforce so one is nursing degree means that you are graduate okay you can perform anywhere but i am talking about specialization so i need to have specialized workforce so that i know my oncology is taken care my critical care is taken care emergency is taken care or dialysis is taken care right so that is the that is proposed by who then is balancing the skill mix i cannot put all the perfect picture perfect uh, staff at one place and new staff at one place so i need to have a doctor like you know a proper mix up of the experience proper mix up of the doctor and nurse experience so that i can give a best experience to my customer or my patient so ups- upskilling is a process how how can we do the upskilling it is a process of learning new skills or refining existing skill sets to enable a person to continue practicing with these upskilling is also essential when adapting in the times of change or crisis so if we talk about senior people so if i see dr anu like you know so do you think that she had already she had just been sitting on her bsc degree which was probably like you know so many years first okay but the figures in the right so we need to upskill so the venue if you want to the if you want to look at the growth pattern that will directly be linked to the upskilling of your career okay. can i please can you mute yourself everyone please na ne va tagothe madam last lighting ee ge participants okay you are requested to uh, mute yourself okay no problem okay na ne then so what is the process we are going to follow so every nurse who wants the nursing degree is done there are three important pillars so one is your education then is what is your skill set what are you doing to upskill yourself so when when we are talking about basic nursing education what does it give you automatically you employment the moment i am a nurse i can apply for a job okay but the moment uh, do you yeah, think anybody okay 
anybody uh, who has not finished the nursing degree do you think they can work as an uh, as a full time nurse no ma'am they are not so they can only work as in gdas or as a nursing students or as in like they are not a full time professional right so basic nursing education is the first step what i need to do but what what does it give me it gives me employment okay then is skill if i if i earn a skill so i have worked in a uh, say example i have worked in oncology area it gives me a skill it tells me how to do how to do the care of cvads how to take a care of palliative care patient uh, radio what is radiation so it gives me skill which is like you know uh, not present with all the other nurses so it gives me assertion so that means it gives me power if i know how to tackle my cancer patients i am a step edge i have a edge over the other people who are just the basic nursing education yes or no and what does it give about upskilling upskilling se kya hoga upskilling se we are going to talk about empowerment so this is it is a cycle everybody who is a nurse will get a job but that job is not not going to give you assertion that good job is not going to give you empowerment until unless you have skill until unless you are upskilling i have a skill i learned oncology 15 years ago but if i don't brush my knowledge if i don't bring my degree up with the times it's not going to give me that empowerment to talk about it okay so my request to the young minds would be like you know i just make sure that we have three things in our mind always i have the degree i need to skill myself and then i need to upskill myself okay yes ma'am okay so now we are talking about oncology so oncology is or we say critical nurse specialist okay so what is it demands what it demands sophisticated knowledge and strong decision making skills but it also calls for a limitless amount of compassion and kindness so what do you mean by compassion and kindness and why it is linked to cancer cancer is something a person already knows that he may not survive but still he is fighting or she is fighting similar is ke, like you know the relatives or the family they are fighting with their destiny kind of a thing they are giving the treatment but they are still know the fact that cancer is something it can never be out of your system right so until and unless i have that compassion and kindness towards this reality i cannot be a good oncology nurse professional possibilities available are as diverse as patient population they serve so they say that professional jo professionally with upskilling myself these will change as per the requirement of the population some specialities what is available in oncology nursing is radiation oncology hospice and palliative care so if i may ask what is what is palliative care anyone Ma'am, palliative care is mainly when the patient is in palliative yes, care, which is provided symptomatic treatment only. Yes, right. So, but do you think palliative care and end of life care is different? Uh, kind of. I mean, uh, symptomatic yeah, treatment only. Just cure for cancer. Because uh, sister, we have to care for symptoms uh, only. Right. Yeah. We used to yes. only make a statement for the symptoms, and for so, the yeah, there is mm-hmm. an perfect. Yes, so palliative and end of life care, it really goes hand in hand. But palliative is something where I know I do not have a solution to the problem, so I am only doing symptom control. I am not fighting myself to uh, provide treatment to the disease. but i am only doing symptom control so that is palliative care and when we are talking about hospice hospice is a place where i actually i am focusing on the palliative care so if i talk about the complete oncology nursing cancer is not only about chemotherapy wow. so it has various wings as in medical surgical radiation home care hospice care so this wow. is all 
under the umbrella of oncology nursing so we have radiation we have hospice we have preventive and detection which is a huge role it plays in the oncology because i can cure cancer if i know it at the right time but once the cancer has uh, spread then it is difficult for me to control so there is a role of oncology nurse in the prevention and detection patient education genetics do you think genetics is involved in the cancer can you name any one cancer which is because of the genes yes anyone can you name any something any cancer which is uh, which is because you have those genes in your body because you are sorry blood cancer breast cancer ma breast cancer yes so breast cancer is one of the examples which is carried on the genes so brca1 or 2 they are the genes which if blood cancer is not for sure aisa nahi hai but then breast cancer is something it is definitely carried over the genes okay sorry just give me a minute please okay uh then is uh psychological care psychosocial care pain management home care neuro oncology and surgical oncology so what is uh, home care what do you what idea you have about home care ma'am home care is a patient cancer suffered and uh, symptomatically care normal routine care provided by bed bath care catheterization care and medicine given but do you prescribe format in right but anyone else anybody can you tell anything specific about home care to oncology what the idea behind is to make people know that there are so many wings which is available in cancer care for nurses so home care is not only about supportive care it's not only about end of life care or it's not only about uh, that i am only going to give up the help with activity of daily livings so there is a wing where in home care we are providing chemotherapy at home we are providing dialysis at home we can even uh, like you know we can give supportive care in terms of antibiotics at home in so this is all under the so home care itself has a speciality of oncology home care cancer home care so if you look into the depth it's not only the home care it is not uh, related to the uh, like you know the primitive home care that it is only for the help of people it is not only he- helping with adls okay so that is again a separate wing which is available for the nurses to grow then is neuro oncology and surgical oncology so what is the best so what, what do you think the choice of treatment for any cancer would it be medical on onco- medical surgical radiation what do you think surgical and treatment depend on condition severity basis but best treatment is surgical intervention and immediate medication intervention is best right. so if you ask me if the what is the easiest way to take the bulky uh, cancer out of my body is surgery right but it really depends on the medical condition can we do the surgery or not is it the right sometimes the it is the extent of the disease sometimes it's comorbidity sometimes it is the location of the cancer where we cannot really do the surgical uh, intervention right away so but how do, but do you think normal med surge nursing would be different than surgical oncology nursing it would be largely different because when i am talking about surgical oncology say for example we have d- uh, done a uh, breast cancer surgery so it will be largely also preventing the lymphedema if it is if it is a colon, colon cancer then we are talking about colostomy care if in case it's a head and neck cancer we are talking about feeding difficulties so that is why the speciality of surgical oncology would be completely different so in india do you think that we have the separate wings like this no should we have it do you think we should have it yes ma'am yes ma'am 
so for the growth of the nurses for the care of the or the betterment of the patient to bring in specialization these are the changes we need to work on we need to propose we need to make the things happen the leaders have the responsibility that they create it they provide the opportunity for the juniors the juniors have the responsibility or the new nurses or the novice nurses that they have the responsibility to skill and upskill themselves to say that we are different and we can do it we can bring the change in the care of the patient right so oncology or the clinic nursing specialist expectations so what are my expectations is it's not only about the clinical practice it is also about a multidisciplinary team it is about providing high quality patient centered timely cost effective care so when i'm talking about nursing in cancer it's not only about that i only give the injections i only give the fluids i only take care of the adls i need to know about the diagnosis i need to know the growth of the diag diagnosis i know, need to know what is the prognosis of my disease i need to know is my medical doctor doing chemotherapy why dose reduction why first line of treatment why second line of treatment why surgery why radiation so this is something what makes oncology nurse different than a normal med surg nurse or any other graduate nurse if you want to earn if we are going into the speciality this is i need to develop into my mind that i need to grow as a multidisciplinary team okay they provide tailored care depending on the patient level of need so it depends what is the need so i can only provide a tailored care if i know myself if i do not know myself that what radiation is being given what gyri is is being given how many cycles i cannot really help my patient and if you cannot help your patient that way then it doesn't make you oncology nurse and how does it come it is it it only comes with your upskilling so cns spend time would be clinical activity is 60% 17% is your education education here is not your graduation nursing education is what you have done specifically to upskill yourself then is management is 19 and then is 14 4% is your research patient outcomes can be improved through all four activities and capturing impact will involve looking at all the four areas of activities okay so basically if you if a nurse is able to cover all this that makes you an oncology nurse plus the clinical skills so why oncology nursing is needed because person needs a patient centered or a person centered care we need to know about conditions comorbidities various treatment patterns i need to know the psychosocial needs patient pathways patient what do you mean by patient pathways anyone patient pathways means if i have first i have a cancer at one stage what is my first line of treatment if i say i'm giving chemotherapy my first line of treatment is act if it is uh, node negative triple negative i am going to get i am going to give a different kind of chemotherapy so this is not that we are going to depend on a doctor to tell us what chemotherapy to be given i should be empowered that i should know the pathway ye nahi jayega to second line treatment is this second line fails this is the third treatment so this is what places the oncology nurse forward okay okay any any questions anyone so what are i've just put down as a 10 steppers how to upskill yourself so the first step is first find your passion what do you want to do so if i know my passion is oncology i should know first that what is my passion then is once i <coughs> once i know my passion is what then i have to make a plan on it until and unless i just think i've done my graduation okay i'm doing my job that's my plan ends there then that's not you have not found your passion you need to go down to your step 1 make a plan then you go forward find a mentor try find a person who can help you find a person who you can look to who can guide you okay then make a network make a network so that it's very essential to have a network to help you understand what is in the market how am i going to help myself how can i get help who is the best person to help me 
then be visible you have to be visible you have to say that what what you need so that people who can help you should also know that you need that kind of a help so that we can upskill social media can be used yes education without education i cannot really go up the ladder then is professional and personal development i need to grow i need to grow my profession i need to grow in my personal development as well then be open to signs if you think that you you are getting a sign that yes this is my pathway to grow this is how we grow okay everyone anyone any questions i think i am the only one speaking so uh, maybe we'll just put it to discussion before we end the session no ma'am my thing okay. is clear ma'am so my uh, the point of discussion here is like you know we should know that what specialities are available we should not really be sticking ourselves only to the basic nursing it's our effort to upskill ourselves once i am skilled and upskilled i have various avenues open for me so that's my kind of a take away message for you all over to you anu ma'am thank you hina thank you so much for the wonderful presentation uh, any questions anyone i yeah, i please. see lot of uh, uh, union yeah. nurses i see lot of senior people so from your experience from your doubts or maybe if you have any questions anything pertaining where we can help you or we can be like you know share our views on it yeah, please be yeah, open please. on it anything you want to ask you can ask or you can if you want to write something you can mention in chat box we can discuss uh, ma'am uh, may i yes please yeah, please uh, yes ma'am uh, very nice in organizing this kind of uh, talk to us ma'am because we, this uh, this makes an eye opening for us but actually speaking in india now Uh, so much of um, courses on uh, palliative care or end of life care or holistic care so many things have come up and especially in oncology also uh, like uh, special courses on chemotherapy so many things have come up and madam hina when you initially when you spoke you, you were asking about whether statistics are available yes statistics are available but uh, it was up, it was not updated it was like right. 10 years, 10 years before and um, Ten mm, years before statistics is available, and as you rightly said, many of them are due to stigma or taboo. They don't come out and say, and they say there is a boil. There is like a kind of um, a projection on my head, overhead. That's what they want to say. They don't even say that that it is a cancer. So all these things, whatever you say, we agree to it. But there are so many courses coming up, and uh, as right. you said, something about patient pathway. We here learn about clinical pathway, but not um, specific to patients as such in India. Mm, so i think ma'am so india has to has to much more updated and such kind of treatment modalities or whatever um, the treatment things that is going on should be more more opportunities is to be given for the oncology nurses to update themselves to upskill themselves and to get empowered to provide quality care to the patient this is my opinion ma'am thank you you rightly said ma'am i think um, it's if we only if so just putting my experience together where and i worked in india worked in abroad back to india so the only thing i would say the difference is not definitely i said there are few controllable and uncontrollable reasons but if i talk about my nurses we should not stop our path because of uncontrollable reasons so if my like you know the opportunities needs to be created if i upskill myself i can ask for those opportunities the if when i rely like you know when i go down my uh, experience i would say it's more like you know people are even reluctant to upskill but they need empowerment so that is also not fair from our our field also that i would say just asking for empowerment where i am not putting any effort to upskill myself Mm-hmm. definitely there are reasons where there are operational reasons where the opportunities are less the n number of reasons are there but we need to create our path if i have that zeal if i upskill myself if i have the knowledge opportunities are definitely created so if i if i thinking from uh, managerial perspective thinking from specialization perspective 
it's really the nurses who have to put their step first then the opportunities will definitely come their way yes ma'am thank you thank you uh hina there is one question for you uh someone has mentioned like ma'am will you please guide me through a good book for msc nursing basically they are asking for the oncology uh, part <laughs> yes i can yeah. probably uh, submit a list yeah. of uh, literature to you ma'am and maybe you can share with the participants and uh, that will be like you know helpful for them but to be honest like you know uh, if you ask me i'll be honest uh, presently if you ask me if i am a msc i'm not a msc so uh, i i think dr anu you will be the best person to guide them on books uh, if you ask me i've done my bsc i've done my higher development in oncology and i'm pursuing my mba so that's where i am but i can definitely check and get back to you on that uh, one more question is there kindly explain the target therapy tablets yes it's uh, so the recent guidelines are like you know we we were always talking about medical surgical radiation but the new things which are out is like you know targeted therapy so targeted therapy the next uh, part in treatment cancer is they understand that many of the cancer they have a particular target or you say if you want to relate to a lock and key hypothesis so those cancers where lock and key hypothesis fits in i can use various tablets which are largely the targeted medicines uh, so that is one number two the tablets are the hormonal uh, hormonal uh, tablets so there are few cancers which are triggered by hormones right so say for example breast cancer ovarian cancers so these tablets cannot be given to all the cancers it really depends what kind of disease and do we have the right data fitting in where i can give those tablets okay uh hina one more question is there how to counsel a family who cannot afford cancer treatment so presently in india we have uh, so there are different wings so there is corporate there is like private segment there is a government segment so the costing would definitely be an issue with a private sector when you don't have a panel uh, the similar can be little lesser in the government segment but the only point is the queue is very long right so that is why in the present world uh, there are few buffer systems available like you know if you can get a consult and the same chemotherapies can be given at home because if you are giving at home the pricing of the drugs is something which in which is in your control there are few other things where you can bring the cost down but this is largely a gap in our healthcare system which we cannot really comment but if in case you are looking for an advice for someone maybe like you know someone you know i would only suggest is like you know get the treatment started and look for the home care services and the people which can be because chemo is something you cannot really give it anywhere you need to have a special oncology nurse to give it so that there are no side effects so treatment stopping the treatment because of the cost can be an issue when you don't really have a money you can't do anything then is government segment is the only answer but if you have less money and you still i would say don't stop the treatment but find for alternatives but definitely not really taking the hit of uh, like you know unsaid medicines where you do not even know that what is inside those pudias so don't that's a, i would say a sheer wastage of money hello Hello, Hello ma'am. Good afternoon. Hi. Can you hear me properly? Yes, ma'am. Okay, it was nice Hello. organization on the special day. Good afternoon, Mr. Kelly and Dr. Kelly. Ah, request to uh, to all of you. Like, can you uh, speak one by one? Yes, yeah, so it's overlapping actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mrs. Krishna Veni. Yes, ma'am. Good yeah. afternoon, ma'am. very good afternoon i'm actually uh, aims patna is having a surgical oncology madam aims oncology That's definitely it would have mm. we've lost actually, your voice yeah uh, uh, hina she is working with aims patna so okay. she was saying like they are having a very good uh, you know oncology surgical oncology department oh very good i yeah. think uh, is krishna veni Yes, ma'am. Krishna Veni. Yeah, yes. please, please. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. We are having a separate wing for surgical oncology, ma'am. So last three years is functioning, ma'am. 
so good it's it's yeah, so good so that i think social oncology you know that's what i thought to uh, share the information okay okay so no, surgical yes it's actually good that people like if i talk about the private sector it's definitely well in place if you ask me in delhi it's well very well placed in uh, delhi or in metro cities but it is coming up in uh, government segment as well i it is really good i think that's how we are all are evolving and yes. everybody is understanding the importance of specialization yes sir uh in a last question for you uh, can we give a uh, chemo can we give a uh, chemotherapy to pregnant women will it affect the baby so uh, if in case that is the situation there are few medications which can be given during the first trimester so uh, it's not really a generalized or a blanket kind of a rule for this so it really depends what medicine are to be it really depends on the uh, chemical of the medicine so there are only very very few medicines which can be given during pregnancy uh, please and that the name of your medicines please we cannot really say to be honest like you know generally uh, i should not give you any wrong information because this is something it has to come out with from a doctor only number one and the other thing is generally if in case the child is not a precious child like you know there are few people where they had been waiting for a child for so many years and th- those kind of a things the choice would always be to like you know not to carry the pregnancy forward but if in case there is a situation like this where the parents are adamant that no they want to carry the baby along with the uh, cancer treatment then it really depends on the discussion between the clinician the oncologist and the patient because it's hardly two drugs which can be given like you know and that too if in case it's a breast cancer i can still give but if you ask me lung cancer and give me the treatment the choices would be very less okay ma'am okay Okay. Hello, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, may I ask a question? Yes, please. One by one. Both of you can ask, but one by one, please. Okay. First Sorry, of all, ma'am, ma'am, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So I think Ankita, if you can take a pause, I think uh, maybe the other one because he's been trying to speak uh, from the last ten yeah, yeah. minutes. Mr. Yes. Uh, Mr. Sunil. Yeah, Mr. Sunil. Yes. Yeah, please. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I especially congratulate the organization because you have taken nice topic on a special day, World Cancer Day, and it was uh, conducted, executed also nicely. So, can I say congratulations to the speaker for her experience? She is giving best examples, and third, Thank very you. important that the young generation who is participating in this session actively. Uh, my question regarding. we are mostly thinking about the treatment but we have very fine uh, measure that is a preventive measures so through our n- new generation we can s- spread the information about uh, prevention of cancer right very Good. rightly said very rightly said mr sunil yes preventive segment is something which is so i always put myself as in controllable uncontrollable so preventive which is something which comes in your controllable factors so that is why if you look into the uh, newer uh, guidelines also there is lot of stress on prevention of cervical cancers prevention of like you know timely uh, mammograms being done so this is all something uh, it's even the government has highlighted and even uh, as you said the new the newer generation like the, the new nurses they should also put more effort into the preventive segment so look for the preventive medicines also preventive uh, health uh, zeba you want to ask something zeba you want to ask something i think yes. yeah yeah please yeah. मैं मुझे ये क्वेश्चन पूछना था कि जैसे कई बार ऐसा होता है कि हम कीमोथेरेपी दे रहे हो फेस पे स्पिल हो गया तो क्या वो डेंजरस है या इट्स सेफ definitely dangerous hair zeba so that is why we said oncology nursing because oncology nurse should know chemotherapy extravasation matlab leak ho gaya tab kya karna hai aapke upar spill ho gaya tab kya karna hai so there are various protocols which are to be followed in oncology nursing that is why it makes us no, super specialized to to is concern kehna but skin pe agar hota hai to bhi danger hai 
Yes. So it has the capacity. So uh, say if any any chemotherapy itself, it is a carcinogenic itself. So it is called cytotoxic medicine, right? Cytotoxic. It's a other name yeah, of yeah. chemotherapy. So cyto means it itself has the capacity to kill the cells. Okay. So but the only thing the trigger is it has to recognize the bad cells. But for ke- chemotherapy, all cells are cells. So if it is spilled somewhere or if it leaks into the veins, it will kill the adjo- adjoining or the adjacent cells also wherever it comes in contact with. Okay. So there is a protocol. If in case number one, uh, whenever you are administering a chemotherapy, you need to wear the full PPE gowns along with the shield. But still, if there is a spill, the protocol says you have to just wash it with uh, like, you know, good splash of water. We don't really have to apply anything. And the only thing is, if it is uh, irrigate your eyes well, irrigate your skin well. If in case there is any irritation or something, you have to contact a dermatologist. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I think Ankita was another one. She was trying to ask something. Uh, Zeba. Zeba was there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is all okay. about question answer session. Thank you so much, Shina. Uh, okay. Uh, we have Binu sir with us. Uh, he is president of NSS. Uh, Binu sir, welcome to the webinar. Welcome to the uh, webinar, sir. So I request Binu sir to say a few words. Very good afternoon. I don't know people who have joined from different zones. So good afternoon, good day to everybody. It's a great pleasure to see everyone. Learning is continuous. And in this pandemic, all are learning virtually. Hope it is not by chance. The choice, it is by choice. Learning is by choice, not by chance, even if it is in virtual learning. And I will first. I would like to congratulate Dr. Anu Gobangam, Professor, Amity University, Gurgaon, Haryana, for organizing and being a background from the starting conference and making all the minor changes and making it in a very good way. So I congratulate, ma'am, for the success of this conference. It's it is a great timely conference on the same day of the theme. We are very lucky to have Mrs. Hina Ma'am, the clinical pathology, a right expert person who has shared various views. So I am very thankful from the whole society for Hina Ma'am for being present with us and enlightening us with such a wonderful related to the cancer aspects and stressing the that knowledge is lifelong we should empower ourselves and gain there is no way other than that empower yourself and learning is lifelong so i'm grateful to Gina ma'am for giving a wonderful section on the world thank you next i'd like to thank the, of course before the success of any program the god almighty is present I'd like to thank all, each one who has done behind the stage, front the stage for the success of this conference. Thank you all. Thank you. Therapy. My first line of treatment is ACT. If it is uh, node negative, triple negative, I am going to get, I am going to give a different kind of chemotherapy. So this is not that we are going to depend on a doctor to tell us what chemotherapy to be given. I should be Thank you everyone for giving me this opportunity and uh, let's just keep upskilling ourselves that's my motto yeah thank you thank you so thank much you, thank you so much uh, Hina. thank you so much sir for supporting and everything thank you